Hurrah! We're saved! Oh my god, that's the worst fun ever. <laughs> How dare they not cut my grass? <laughs> Hi everyone, it's been an age, but we're back and we have a pulley tunnel cover. It's not ready, quite ready to plant in, as you can see, because I've got all the beds still to fill and now I need to put some cardboard down to stop the weeds coming through because grass and all the weeds are starting to come through, which is really irritating. The ground is cracked, which is not good. Another massive, massive job coming up as soon as I get some compost is to fill all the beds and then I'll be ready to get some stuff planted. The best part today, the pulley tunnel, is the fact that it's actually raining outside and I'm not getting wet. I'm in here staying dry and I'm warm. Warm and dry. So the rain has actually ruined the, the whole plan for today's video. Um, so I'm going to have to shelve that for another day. So today I'm just going to be in here sowing some seeds showing you a few of the things I've got in the poly tunnel, which is basically nothing because I've got most of my stuff at home so I need to bring it all back up and put it up here but I'm basically just going to talk you through what I'm going to have in here. So I'm just going to pan around and show you the inside of the poly tunnel so you can see what I've got to work with and yeah I'll show you what I'm going to do. So we've got a raised bed all the way around, ignore the cardboard and the weeds, um, that's going to be home to my tomatoes, chilies and some other bits and bobs I haven't decided yet. And there's my bench. Honestly, there's just such a mess in here. So I have loads of the stuff that was in my poly tunnel, which is all outside the poly tunnel in a bed at the moment. So I need to bring it all back in again and then um, sort of tidy up. But um, I've only just got back here after a very long Easter break. And this has been the first opportunity I've had to actually come up here and do some stuff. So the rain is very frustrating as per going to work with it and I'm just going to sow some seeds instead and then um, hopefully when we get a drier day I can come up here put all my stuff back in and hopefully by then I might actually have some compost to go in the beds because my tomatoes are about that big now and they are so ready to be in here that's what I'm going to do today. I'm quite frustrated by the fact that beds now have the weed grass growing in and the creeping buttercup docks god knows what else but I'm probably going to just I've got enough just get some cardboard down over them and then once I've got the compost just cover it all and hopefully it will kill the weeds and I can plant straight in it um, and I realized that these beds are so much bigger not only are the beds so much bigger the poly tunnel is so much bigger that I can have like two to three times the amount of tomatoes and chilies that I had last year and also I've got space for other stuff so I don't know if anyone's got any suggestions of things that grow, that grow really well in a poly tunnel and um, then throw them my way because I would love to, I'd really love to grow some melons or something like that. Um, my grapevine's actually doing terribly outside so I'm wondering whether I might permanently um, move them to the poly tunnel and then just have some grapevines growing around. I think that'd be freaking awesome. Pretty sure Monty Don did that. Doesn't have a poly tunnel. I'm pretty sure Monty Don's got it in a greenhouse and it's, I mean, it's working great. I've had my grapevines for about four to five years now and I've had nothing. So I'm obviously doing something horribly wrong, aren't I? So we need to rethink that. But also, blueberries, the birds get them before I have a chance to even get a look in. So I'm thinking of maybe permanently putting the blueberries in here so that the birds can't eat them. And, you know, because blueberries are expensive, you know, and everyone in my family loves a blueberry. So it'd be really nice to actually get some blueberries to eat rather than just watching them seeing them one day and be like yeah they'll be ripe soon and then like the next week gone decimated i'm all about wildlife don't get me wrong and i leave stuff the birds but not my blueberries please they cost so much money to buy one of the reasons why i'm growing them is because they're so expensive to buy and it'd be really nice to actually harvest some blueberries to take home another new addition is this awesome path in the middle which means I don't have to use cardboard 
to use the Crocs. If you don't like Crocs, that's you problem, not a me problem. You need to get involved. So now I don't have to worry about weeds growing in the middle and I can just concentrate on keeping these beds weed free. This is not a we're ready to go polytunnel video. This is a next stage polytunnel video. And hopefully the next one will be when they're all filled with delightful compost. So what's growing in my polytunnel at the minute? I've got some onions in little cells because if you remember from my onion video, I had uh, quite a few left over. So I thought I would just plant them up. So then these can go in another home. I've got some purple sprouting broccoli and I've got some nasturtiums. I've also got some flower seeds on the go. They dried out a little bit. That's the one thing you need to be aware of when you have polytunnel is that things dry out. So I need to get these watered because they're not going to germinate otherwise. Snapdragons in ears, Canterbury bells, and some other bits and bobs. And I've got some sunflowers, which is a miracle that they're still here, if I'm honest, because I'm going to show you why. Now I'm hoping that this is just a hole from when we were making this frame and that that's not a mouse hole but that is the perfect place for a mouse to get in and I did have a massive mouse problem last time I need to get that filled really because I would have things like peas peas and beans always I would sow them and then the next time I'd come up here they would they would, would have been eaten and some flower seeds so um very annoying so I'm really hoping because we've got these sleepers and stuff I might stay away with a bit of luck. When I was last up here, I did some serious digging and serious prep of the outside beds from the polytunnel. And I'm going to show you what I did, although they look awful now. They've dried out and cracked. That's why I'm in desperate need of some compost. This is the outside of the polytunnel. It's pretty big. But if you can see, I've got my raspberries there. Look at the soil, it's so bad at the moment. I actually weeded and dug this all up and it was looking good and now it's just dry. I've got some chard coming back, so that's good. Don't need to re -sew. Yeah, this is all dug up and then this is the next bit that I need to work on. Just sorting out this bit. This all needs to be prepared. Um, it all needs new stuff, new compost. Um, I did have, under here, oh here we go, I was going to say, I planted blueberry plants without knowing that there were asparagus in here. Last time I checked there were no, none coming through and I thought maybe they'd all died. This one's almost gone over. This one's looking good. That's the problem with asparagus, you literally have to get it at exactly the right time, otherwise it turns into a freaking tree. And is it even worth taking one home? This is the thing. There's like two in the bed. Last time I just ate one because I thought I'm probably not going to get back up here in time to get it. So I just ate it. <laughs> I'm probably just going to eat that one. Quite nice to have a little allotment feast. <laughs> so you know what? Look at these. I can't be bothered. I'm not. I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> just going to eat it. I'm not even going to wash it. So yeah. It doesn't get fresher than that, does it? Allotment asparagus. It's so nice. This is the area that I'm going to sow for today. This is my little herb patch. At the moment I've got a fig tree in the middle which doesn't grow very big and it doesn't bloody produce any figs. So any advice would be greatly appreciated. Got some fennel in there. I've got sage, parsley and I think that's as far as it goes for perennials. And then I'm just going to sow some bits. I think there's some mint over there actually in that pot. You know the pot's broken. So yeah, I'm going to sow some salad, some salad leaves to go in here. My son loves to come and taste all the different leaves. So it's really nice to have a little section where we can come and sit and try all the things. And he's really not very adventurous when it comes to vegetables, but he will try anything up here. So that's it's really good. And he gets to see how it grows, what it looks like. And I think that's quite a nice thing really, isn't it, for a kid? take a look at the blossom on my tree so i'm excited to get loads of apples this year these are tiny little red ones i'm not entirely sure what the variety is because i didn't plant it um i acquired it but they're little small little red apples 
be really nice to have some so we didn't get any last year and beyond the sprout flowers is my pile of crap that needs to go back in the polytunnel <laughs> look at these you know these are actually edible as well it's going to be a video of me eating random plants from my allotment they taste really nice you know what's that bit it's got like a i don't even know how to describe it it's really tasty i missed lunch okay and this bit so bad but i'm just going to try and concentrate on the front part of the allotment plot this year because otherwise i'm going to get way too overwhelmed but it's not looking good you wouldn't believe it but i've got strawberries there we've tried to sort of salvage one bed that is part of my hammock that is not even mine i don't even know why that's here that's somebody else's compost bin we had a burn pile um yeah that's where we burnt some of the rubbish um most of the beds here were rotten so it is essentially a case of taking all the old bits of wood um away and burning them this is the old polytunnel frame this whole bit is just basically have to be um, started from the beginning. I think I'm just going to cover it all over um, and leave it for a year because I can't work on this at all. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. But hopefully, I may, maybe I'll relocate the strawberries. Maybe that's what I'll do. We'll relocate the strawberries to somewhere better. Oh, it's starting to flower already. Lovely strawberries in between the thistles. Go back to this pile. I need something to sew some stuff in. Christ, this is all in my poly tunnel. What should we get? Grab a few trays. I'll grab a few trays and go back to the poly tunnel. Not me completely forgetting that I actually have some weed membrane. So I can put that in the poly tunnel to cover up the grass. Hurrah! We're saved. I just laid it down temporarily. Hopefully it will kill some of the weeds. Just to sort of help to keep those weeds down until I get some compost. So that's a bonus. Honestly. Get lost. Ugh. It's so disgusting. Basically, I'm just gonna sit here. Every time I come up here, <laughs> I spend I spend loads of time just like sitting in this chair. Having a little think <laughs> about what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do that today because today, today I'm going to have a little sow with some seeds for my herb patch. What have we got? Let's have a look. Root vegetables. That's for another day. Herbs. What do I want in my herb patch? So last year I had rocket. Um, love rocket. Oh, so good. It's like my favourite salad leaf. Some rocket. I need to sow some rocket. I all, what else did I have? I had some marigolds, I think, or calendula, because I wanted I wanted to kind of have some flowers in there that are also edible, that are also used for medicinal purposes. Not that I'm going to use them to make anything, but I just really like the idea of having edible flowers and edible herbs in the same bed. It's a bit hippie-ish, but I don't care. So what have we got? Cherville. I think this might be a bit aniseedy. I can't really remember. But at some point in my life, I ordered some Cherville. So obviously, I'm going to just sow some of that. So possibly, there's a possibility. Cinnamon basil. I've not had much success with sowing basil. Don't know why. Um, I think it's a bit temperamental. It likes to be in, in warm places. So possibly... So possibly it would like to be in the polytunnel. But sometimes it's easier just to buy a basil plant and then separate all the plants out because those basil plants from the supermarket, you end up with about six plants. They're actually six plants all together in one pot. So once you take them out, you actually can just pot them on into their own pots. And for the price of one of those and all the faff it takes to grow basil, I'm just going to say... That's probably what I'm going to do this year. It's a lot easier and a lot quicker because I could go get one now. But I might have a go at this because I've not tried this before. Cinnamon basil. I've got some thyme. I like thyme. Thyme isn't very hardy, so you do have to sow this every year. 
I'm going to give that a go. I hate, do you know what I hate? I hate things with tiny little seeds. It irritates me. The tiny seeds irritate me. I like a substantial seed. I like to be able to see the seed. Also, I know that when I sprinkle these onto the tray, and when they eventually start germinating, they're going to be a pain to prick out because they're going to be about that big. So, it's irritating. So, quite often with the tiny seeds, I just sow them direct. So, I might wait and sow that direct when it's a bit warmer. I like to be in control of where my plants go. So, if you sow them in seed trays, then you can actually just plant them out where you actually want them. Whereas, if you plant them direct you have no control over where they go and also I forget I always forget that I've sown something like the other day I was literally thinking in my garden I've sown direct agastache if that's how you say it and some California poppies and I actually forgot that I'd even done that and then what I'll do is I'll plant something where I've sown the seeds and I always forget to label so I never even put a plant marker there to remind myself what else have we got gigantic parsley dill i love dill and i almost always forget to sow it i grow a lot of cucumbers and last year i grew gherkin cucumbers and made my own gherkins and what would have been ideal ideal <laughs> what would have been ideal <laughs> oh my god that's the worst pun ever <laughs> also the best um, would have been to have some homegrown dill to put in the jars because that is what you get they're dill pickles essentially so yeah i'm gonna grow some dill cress does anyone eat cress does anyone even eat cress coriander i don't know why i got so excited but i do really love coriander coriander is one of those ones you have to sow every year as well which is annoying what's going on basil more basil lettuce leaf basil that's weird winter savory I sowed this last year or the year before and this is a perennial I've not tried it before so I don't know what it tastes like but I like the fact that it was perennial and also I'm pretty sure I've seen this on Gardener's World I'm sure Monte John's got winter savoury or he's got summer savoury I think they're meant to be quite nice so yeah winter savoury um oh yeah I forgot to say um I left it in the polytunnel and didn't water it and then it died so and then the polytunnel blew away <laughs> So winter savoury, yes, I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for that again because I do like a perennial. More basil, is this a joke? Right, if anyone wants any basil seeds, apparently um, that's all I've got. <laughs> right, what else is this? Caraway. Now, I'm actually super excited. I forgot I bought this. Caraway seeds. If you haven't tried them, they taste a bit aniseedy, but I use them in, I make like a pickled cabbage sauerkrauty type side dish which you can use caraway seeds in the recipe so if you do and sometimes if you do red cabbage with like red wine vinegar and sugar and onions put some caraway seeds in it honestly it is so delicious look at me giving you a recipe maybe i'll maybe i'll turn this into a recipe because it's a really good recipe but anyway caraway seeds in some kind of pickly cabbage it's absolutely delicious okay now this is cumin yeah, anyone ever grown a cumin plant before? Because I haven't. I use cumin seeds a lot and dried crushed cumin. Clearly, I thought growing a cumin plant would be a good idea. I don't know if it's even possible. This is another really good one, actually. We've got some in our garden and I've not actually eaten it, but it's called Salabernet. And it's like fluffy, they're not fluffy, frilly leaves. Nice. It's quite a nice looking plant. And then it's got tiny flower heads, little red flowers tall red flower heads yeah that's a nice one that would look really nice actually in the herb bed oh my god more basil <laughs> this is getting ridiculous now okay this is a bit different though this is dark opal dark opal basil so that's quite cool i might actually give that one a go because it's the red leaf and basil and that would look that would look lovely tansy apparently i wanted this i should get these ideas in my head Lemon bergamot, tiny seeds again. That's just going to disappear into the disappear into the air. That's where we're at. Okay, there's like a ton. Before I run out of time, I need to get these sown. I'm just about to venture out and get some more plant labels because they're outside in the rain. Wish me luck. <laughs> It's 
not the neatest of setups, but um, <laughs> I'm actually managing, actually managing to get some sewn. Yep, I've done coriander, got some dill. I've just done caraway. I'm going to run out of labels. Do the bit outside in the rain. Does anyone like a bit of Sherville in their lives? <laughs> if anyone knows what Sherville is, leave a comment. <laughs> So I'm going to have to go home and Google this. Sherville. Clearly at some point in my life, I'd looked into Sherville and I decided that it was a good idea for the plot. So, Sherville seeds. So let's have some Sherville in our lives. Try not to go too crazy. You don't want a million plants, especially when you don't know what it is or whether it even tastes nice or what to do with it why am i so ridiculous i don't have a rose i think it's called a rose for the end of my watering can so i just have to make do so i'm pretty much gonna just drown these <laughs> oh, i need to sort that out really look this is not the way to water really not the way to water we got some sewn also don't do that <laughs> God's sake. i've literally just watered the labels and now it's almost disappeared hopefully next time i come up i'll still be able to read those labels but at least i've got this video i can go back on the video and remind myself if the labels wash off what i've just sewn so my herb bed plants are sewn and hopefully next time I come up here, we might even have some seedlings emerging. So that would be really nice. Thank you for watching my video next week. Hopefully, hopefully we will be back outside of the polytunnel to do the video that I had planned for today. But we will see. We will see. So I've been thinking my channel is for you to show you that gardening can be done by anyone. With that in mind, I wanted to know if there's anything in particular, any subjects, anything you'd like me to talk about on the channel, any particular gardening questions you've got that you'd like answered, or if you have any suggestions for any videos or any content you'd like to see, please do let me know. Thank you for watching. As always, your support means the world. Come back again next week and see what else I'm doing. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Laters.